What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the It Resolves podcast. My name is Kevin. My name is Will. Thank you for tuning in, watching, or listening, doing it, however you're doing it, where you're doing it. I feel as though it's been many moons. It has. Oh my gosh, it has. Um, Yeah, so. I I grew a beard. It's been so long. Me too. (laughs) (laughs) I shaved my beard. It's been so long. Um, (laughs) Welcome back, guys. I know it has been quite a while since we have done a podcast episode. It's good to be back. I've missed Will greatly. Uh, So, Will, thank you for, for jumping back in. Really Man, appreciate it's, it. It's good to be here. I <laughs> I feel like I just came back with the milk, and <laughs> it's been a long time. And single mommy over here has has just really been holding it down. I love um, it. I have a lot of work to to make it up to the fam. It's how well, it feels. Well, you have every opportunity to do so, is what I will say. So the hope (laughs) for this, the hope is that we will be able to uh, accommodate doing the podcast a little bit more often now. Uh, We're stepping back from streaming the podcast. Uh, If if you guys were here maybe a few months back or towards the end of last year, uh, we did start streaming the podcast a little bit, which was a really fun endeavor and it was a great time, but it turned out schedules were not uh, really in line for that to be a feasible long-term goal. Uh, so we are recording these ahead of time, uh, right? which gives us a little bit more editing capability. So voila, it's a trade-off. Uh, but we are here, we're talking Sil- or Strixhaven. I was about to say Silver Quill. Uh, we're only going to talk about <laughs> Silver Quill today. Um, just, just Black White. That's, that's all we want to talk about. Just today. Black White. That's all we care about. No, uh, we are going to talk about Strixhaven uh, as a whole. Uh, some of the particular cards that we feel are going to breach particular formats, uh, and we are talking all the way through modern. I've got some commander on my list. Um, yeah. I've got a, a good strong list, I like to think. Uh, and so we are going to talk about some of them. This is not going to be an exhaustive list, because if we were going to be exhaustive, we'd probably be here all day. Uh, but <laughs> uh, there is a lot sure. of really, really fun stuff to talk about with this set. Uh, but before oh, that... Yeah. Uh, two things actually I want to thank the patrons ahead of time we we always forget to thank the patrons but thank you to patrons uh, for, thank you patrons for, for patroning and, all of this and making this a, a thing that we do Way yes. to be there uh, no really do appreciate the support from the patrons uh, it's, it truly is because of them that we get to do so much cool stuff uh, so thank you to yeah. all of you guys for, for supporting the channel uh, and, and giving us the, the tools to do what we need to do but uh, we also get to do the random card of the day and I have missed this so much oh, yeah. uh, this, so, this always feels good roll that let's do so. it 3, 2, 1 Oh, gosh. <laughs> All right. Love it. Uh, from Betrayers of Kamigawa, we have Patron of the Kitsune, uh, which I believe I am saying correctly. It is a 5-6 for 4 and 2 white. Legendary creature, Spirit. Spirit was relevant at the time, worth noting. Yep. It Definitely. has an ability that I don't even believe I have ever seen, which is Fox, Fox Offering. offering. Uh, I don't remember yeah. this at all. Uh, you may play this card at any time. You could play an instant by sacrificing a fox uh, and paying the difference in mana cost between this and the sacrificed fox. Mana cost includes color. Uh, that's kind of helpful. And then whenever a creature attacks, yeah. you can gain one life. I mean, this is just silly, right? Definitely silly. <laughs> um, I think like this was probably solid and limited, right? Where yeah. it's just a big from- boy. Yeah, it's it's a big boy. Fox offering feels like really bad ninjutsu. Yeah, uh, and I I don't. There were a lot of foxes, I guess, weren't there? And like fox tokens you could make. I mean, I guess so, but I, I don't think it was like a. I I never remember seeing a fox deck, so like I don't think it was enough yeah. to to truly make it a thing. Um, no, no, no. This is like limited. Uh, this is a limited bomb for yeah, sure. Yeah, that, that's. Um, that's it. The The yeah, life gain, honestly, is kind of nice and limited as well. It just gives you a little bit of an extra good. buffer. Um, and if you yeah. happen to draft, like, a couple of foxes from Betrayers, then, yeah, I think this becomes, I mean, significantly stronger because yeah. you can kind of cheat it out. But Would you ever pick this without a fox? Probably not. I don't know. So it depends on the pack, right? Because the reality is for six mana, you're getting a five, six that has some Mm -hmm. upside. Even without the Fox offering, you can still get a little bit of life gain. So I do think it's worth it Mm -hmm. as just a bomb on its own. But 
I do think obviously it begets it, it gets a lot better with the foxes because then if you can get it out early, that's really the goal. Um, right. If you that's can't, it's just okay. I mean, it's a bomb. It's a bomb. Yeah. So I feel fine. like I want it to. I want it to be evasive. I think in my head, like give it. Uh, yeah. Flying, I think is too strong. Maybe menace, but yeah. I, does white get menace? I don't think so. No, it usually doesn't. And menace wasn't even a thing it back in the day. Right, right, right. Isn't that crazy? We've had a lot of new keywords come out. Um, yeah, stuff that's like betray- evergreen now. When was right? Betrayers? Yeah, oh yeah, for sure. Um, I have no idea when Betrayers was. Oh, 2005. 2005 is when Betrayers came out. What Let's a cool see. set. I, what was I doing? Was I in middle school, I guess, in 2005? I don't remember. Yeah. We, I well, so. I would have been, for sure. I don't know. Yeah. This isn't important. Anyway, let's <laughs> talk about Strixhaven. Yeah. Uh, so, what a cool fucking set, dude. This set is right. rad. Like, what just a sweet set. It feels like uh, Ravnica. It's it's like Ravnica's cool cousin. Um, I that, like. You want to hang out with Ravnica at a party because Ravnica is pretty fun. Yeah. But then when you hear Strixhaven's coming, it's like, oh, okay. <laughs> I oh, I, cool. I really agree. So um, if if you guys missed it uh, last week, I did a, a mega unboxing of Strixhaven where we had two full booster boxes and two pre-release kits. I picked my favorite two uh, colleges, which were Quandrix and Witherbloom, uh, just because I really love the the art on Quandrix is ridiculous. I think it's beautiful artwork it's really on cool. all of the cards. It's just stunning. And Witherbloom, I just like Golgari. Um, but I uh, okay. I was sitting yeah. there putting my binder together, as I always do after I get a new set, and getting that whole set binder together, which is what's all behind me. And um, I was so stoked because I, it felt like putting a Ravnica binder together, where you've got like a handful of monocolored cards, and then just everything's gold. And I'm like, oh, it just looks yeah. so pretty. Um, and yeah, I would agree. It does feel like kind of the cool cousin of Ravnica. It, there are so many interesting things, I think, going on in this set. Um, yeah. A lot of like, I will say leveling the playing field for all colors that I felt like was coming through in this set. Uh, we've started okay. seeing a lot of things pushing in different directions that you wouldn't necessarily expect, uh, which I like. Uh, and we're going to talk about some of those cards today. So uh, the goal of this episode, this uh, return podcast episode, is just to, to kind of pick apart some of the really nice cards that Will and I both found throughout the set. Uh, talk about where we might see them, whether that be standard, historic, uh, and then even further out formats, thinking things like commander, modern. Uh, I didn't pick anything for like legacy or vintage. There was nothing that really hit me there. Um personally though i do think there yeah. might be a couple uh but i wasn't really looking for legacy or vintage i'll be honest um so i i'm really excited though i think modern got a huge buff in yeah. certain areas uh which is really where my heart is at and commander certainly got some new tools as well so uh we can start jumping in will uh yeah. do you want to do this by format or do you just want to kind of go through list by cards and and we'll kind of talk about each one as we go let's let's like pick up let's pick a couple cool cards okay um let's make them the star rather than All right. the format um, well, I'm going to start with two here uh, that are in the colorless era, uh, which we did get, you know, a handful of new colorless cards. And I think a couple of them are really interesting. The first one, <laughs> which is a bit underwhelming to start off with, but uh, Environmental Sciences is a card that I really wanted to talk about. And I, I'm saying this and going into this by saying that I don't per- I don't have a particular place where this card lands yet. But I think what it does for all colors is really crucial. Um, Obviously, Mana Ramp has been not solely dedicated to green, but very heavily focused in green for the longest time. Environmental Sciences, uh, I think in Commander it will get some play because it's just an easy throw into any deck. But it's colorless ramp for any deck. I mean, you can pull any basic land you want, you gain two life, and it only costs two mana of any color. Uh, And the flexibility there is kind of ridiculous because normally, I mean, this is a rampant growth, but better. Not better, I guess, because doesn't rampant growth put it on the battlefield? Yes, Um, it does. But that two life is kind of nice in in place of putting it on the battlefield. I love this. I love this card a lot. I think it's really really good. Um, 
it's probably not best suited in modern, maybe historic. Maybe Might historic, be the like, yeah. oldest set, maybe, our, our format. Yeah. Um, I don't know if if even Pioneer would use it, but I will say this. Um, when I first saw this card, I really thought to like what this could combat, and obviously besides simply like not have it, like having mana fixing is nice, but uh, this card feels really good when you get stuck behind a Blood Moon, I think. And that's... Ooh, yeah. I mean, coming off of saying it doesn't work in modern, I know that sounds kind of <laughs> weird, but like thinking about it, if you're a multicolor deck that absolutely has to have uh yeah you have to hit your colors um siding this in uh when you're facing someone you know has a blood moon uh i think could maybe save your bacon a little bit sure um you know when you when you want to run that one copy of a basic just so you know i can play my white spells or whatever it is um that can save you i don't know that it that anyone would do that with this because it's a sorcery it's two mana yeah um but like that's one i think that is probably its strongest use sure um i don't know mana fixing obviously gets a little better with this set with the cool lands we get yeah um what are we calling these by the way i don't know i haven't heard they're the name show yet. lands they're enemy show, show lands. lands yeah cool i like um, that um, which so does I yeah i mean so to speak on the lands really quick um the the new cycle here is phenomenal it's just another new toolbox enemy colored lands i mean they're great um obviously come into play untapped if you can show uh, a land of either kind whether it be swamp and plains or whatever it might be if you can show one of those from your hand hence show land uh they come into play untapped i do like them um they are not as high on my list of dual lands as a lot of others um, no. yeah i'm with you on that but uh, i think they are decent and the art is stunning on them i will say Art's, art's beautiful. I think throughout this set, the art really pops. Oh, yes. Um, I, yeah, I think these lands really, really help slower decks. Yeah. Um, decks that benefit from playing, you know, three colors, probably something like that. Right. Um, don't really help like your uh, red, white, mono red or anything like that. Not that you No, no. It, but uh, any aggro deck that really can like go off with two lands in hand, mm-hmm. yeah, these are okay. They're but, fine. Um, yeah, but I'm with you. They're not super yeah. exciting. Um, Environmental sciences, though, is cool. Uh, the fact that it's a lesson kind of helps yes. um, its sideboardness. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know, though, that where you'd want to have it, I don't know what else you would run to make it make That's the fair. lesson pay off. You know what I mean? Yeah, I can get but, that. Um, well, moving off of environmental sciences, the only other. Uh, fully colorless card that really kind of struck my fancy was uh wandering archaic and the reason being for this card uh and it's a little too expensive to play in a lot of other decks uh or in a lot of other formats but in commander a four four for five that is colorless that you can ramp into pretty quickly is great that basically says you always have to pay an extra two for all of your instants and sorceries um yeah and whenever an opponent casts an instant or sorcery spell, they may pay to. If they don't, you get to copy that spell uh, and you get to choose new targets. I love this card. Now, I do think it's more of an annoyance. It's not like a game winning kind of card by any means. Uh, generally speaking, in Commander, paying an extra two, we already do things like that with like Ristic Study, stuff like that. A sure. lot of times it will just be paid for, but it does it does kind of force them to lock down extra mana for whatever spell that they're trying to do. Um, and I think that that's pretty important. Uh, now, the other side I'm less excited about, if I'm honest, uh, it's, well, if it will load. Explore the Vast Lands here. It's a three mana sorcery. It's not yeah. that exciting, in my opinion. Um, honestly, I would always be kind of playing it for the Wandering Archaic. It just seems like the better, sure. the better half here. Um, yeah. But again, 100%. having a little bit of flexibility on it is always nice as well. So I, I do love this. Yes. I think it's just a really cool spell. Again, the art, uh, as you mentioned, the art throughout this whole set is stunning. Um, and Wandering Archaic just looks really cool to me. I yeah, love it. most definitely. Does it kind of look like an Eldrazi? It does. Like so I was kind of thinking that as well. And I don't know the lore behind uh, this set uh, as as in-depth as maybe I should, but... Um, the the archaic or whatever these like avatars these things are like i don't know just really cool they do feel eldrazi-esque I, i'm not sure what it is but bit. they're just 
you know, kind of this, kinda this one cool. in particular, like, yeah, I got oh, yeah. And maybe just that it's it's colorless and it's a gray creature in the thing. Maybe yeah. I don't know. Uh, um, there's one more colorless card that I think is oh, worth okay. highlighting, even for a little bit. Um, Campus Guide is pretty good. Okay, um, it's it's all right. Uh, really, more so like limited, um, standard, that kind of range. It doesn't yeah. do anything fancy, right? It's more mana fixing. Sure. Um, Nothing like wrong a, with that. No, and it, it's fine. Uh, it could also, though, I guess, slot into lands matter commander decks in a way. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, it is basic lands, though, so it maybe not. Basic, yeah. um, um, but, but it does I provide that fixing. I mean, it's a nice two yeah. mana fixer. I, it's fine. I it's, think it's two one body. It, like it's it's a definitely a good limited card. I think to to uh, hit your drops if you're not. Yeah. Um, or if that's a worry for you. Yeah, uh, I agree. But those, that's the only one I, I would also bring up. Okay. Um, yeah, a lot of them are uh, are interesting. I mean, we've got some fun ones to to play around with, but I do think they're more gimmicky than anything else. There's like Cody, uh, the Codex. There's Strixhaven Stadium, which is cool. Um, really yeah. awesome cards, but I, I don't know that they are cards that I would necessarily consider heavily in, in any other kind of real strategy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So... Uh, Moving on, what what's another? I, I know you and I were talking before. There's removal mm-hmm. that's really high on the list, in my opinion, for seeing play in other formats. Um, there's yes. a couple of them, in my opinion. Uh, the first one's actually uncommon, which is fracture, uh, and I find okay. this to be really interesting. So instant one white, one black, destroy target artifact, enchantment, or planeswalker. I do mm-hmm. think that because it doesn't hit creatures, it's more regulated to the sideboard. But sure. It is extraordinarily efficient and flexible enough that I think you will find a target most of the time. Um, you know, they're, uh, again, I'm thinking more modern at this point, but okay. usually after sideboarding, they're going to have some kind of artifact hate, enchantment hate, maybe it's a rest in peace or something like that to do with graveyards. Being able to just answer that pretty efficiently for only two mana at instant speed seems very good yeah. to me. Um, yeah. So, and and planeswalkers a lot of the time i mean if you're up against a control deck this is a great card to have hit those jaces get them out of there sure um fairies definitely fairies there's there's really good options for that uh and i think a lot of matchups it's not every matchup which again pushes it more to the sideboard for me but i do think that this is just a really really nice efficient removal spell um more i I sorry uh, hitting you're fine. I think the the big one to me is the rest in peace that you mentioned. Mm-hmm. Um, having to getting to deal with that for two mana, yeah, is pretty solid. I know there's uh, there might be better specific options that only deal with enchantments. I'm not thinking of, but mm-hmm. I, I didn't think about rest in peace as a as a target. That's good. Well, like that graph diggers cage. Like there's a lot mm-hmm. of again a lot of other opposing sideboard cards that you'd probably be facing that that i think provides answers for you that's a good Um, point it hits a lot of those as well as like your um uh aether vial and stuff like that sure um yeah things that they would main board against uh, like the humans deck or something like that yeah no Mm -hmm. i definitely agree um and i i do think that again because it hits three different fairly substantial types of cards that you're going to see um it it does have room i i don't think you would main board it personally i do think there are probably better options to main board but Mm -hmm. for that for that flexible uh you know instant speed spell at only two like that feels really really good to me so i I had to mention it um speaking of uh instant speed two mana spells we've got vanishing verse which i do think is in modern main boardable right now uh exile target sure. monocolored permanent uh again for a white and a black instant speed that that to me is amazing um yeah i'm with you on that it's, it, it hits so many things that are that are scary right now exactly and that's that's the thing uh and i was reading up on this uh, i believe channel fireball or one of the big kind of names in the magic world did release um some some text about vanishing verse saying you know if you if you looked at modern a few months back when things like uro were really common um mm-hmm. you know vanishing verse may not have been quite as powerful or quit hit quite as hard in modern but lately 
because Uro is out, uh, you know, we've got a lot of really, really strong monocolored targets. I mean, again, the Jaces, the the uh, <laughs> things like that, like you Liliana can just is what I of. Liliana. Yeah, but... great option. Like you just get to vanishing verse it for two. And, you know, the other exile effect right now, the big exile effect in in modern is path to exile. Mm -hmm. which is more efficient in terms of mana. I mean, it costs less and it's only a single color, but it's less lucrative in terms of what it can hit. And there's right. upside for the opponent, which is they get to fetch a basic land. Sure. Um, now, I know there are instances where that basic land is not in the deck, and so there's it's essentially yeah. free, but that's a corner case. I think Vanishing Verse just literally not having a downside uh, or, or an upside, I would say, for the opponent. Um, is so so huge uh, especially mm -hmm. in modern where every every mana really counts so yeah um i love this card i think it's fantastic definitely i think gonna see it in in modern uh here yeah. and there yeah it's i don't think you should replace path with vanishing verse no in any case but i together i think you have a really i think like, so too problem. and i think the trick too is that um you know, I, I think you can't replace one for one a lot of the time because I think a lot of yeah. the time when you do see Path to Exile, it's not in a white black shell. Um, you know, I was sure. trying to think about what white black decks have been out in modern at any given point, and there are a few. Um, there's some control style decks, there's a tokens yeah. list, there's things like that that you do see. There's also a lot of decks that just include white and black, uh, not just exclusively those two colors. I mean, you could run it in something like humans if you wanted just some cyborg tech or something like that, maybe. There's options that you can hit with this, but um, I, I truthfully think a control shell with this is just sitting so pretty right now. Um, it's sure. so there's good. a lot of good removal um yeah. and controlling cards really that have come out in in standard blocks yeah um, exactly i think could be utilized really well i mean um, look at so fatal we, push and how it shaped mo i mean that shaped modern that changed the game in yeah. a lot of cases tarmogoyf became virtually unplayable for a very long time i mean things like that really took a dive and i think the removal being upped every single set almost is is ridiculous for modern because that really does have a huge impact sure i'm with you um i have a you know, we talked a little bit before the show about mm -hmm. cards that uh to me a lot of cards in the set feel just like so close yeah yeah right so close to being uh good in other formats yeah. um we talked about removal and i'll bring up one um that is kind of on the edge for me uh i, I just want to get your thoughts so okay. rip apart ah rip apart Rip I the, also had that on my list, funny enough. Good. Okay, good. So the red white sorcery, yeah. uh, deal three damage to dark creature planeswalker, destroy target artifact or enchantment. Uh this one it's to me it's really good. I I think it's good. I don't know yeah. about really good. I Okay, so here's my here's my argument. Okay. Yeah. Cuz I I am very much behind this card. I think it's very good. I okay. get that it's sorcery speed. So I yeah. do understand that there is a problem with that. However, yeah. if you look at like the uh, the red blitz deck where you've got um, the little dude with prowess that when he attacked, um, I can't think of his name. I had him pulled up earlier and I forgot. It's a one mana. From this set? No, 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 no. Excuse me. It's back in like Amonkhet or something like that. Um, oh, the, um, the one that puts like minus one, minus one counter. Or yes. I wish yeah. I could think of it. If if I think Soul about Street. it and. Yes, Soul Scar Mage. Thank you so much. I could not think of that for the life of me. Um, that it's been so long. I remember cards. I this know we're in the reverse universe. Um, anyway, <laughs> uh, you know that really that card in particular, and things like Monastery Swift Spear, like that style deck wants sorceries over instants because. You see yeah, because okay. that prowess trigger hits on your turn and you can get more damage in on your turn if you use it. Now, obviously, instants have that, like, the flexibility that you're going to want. You still are going to want things like Lightning Bolt. You're still going to want things that are going to hit whatever. Yeah. But having a rip apart in that style deck is not a bad thing, crucially. No, and no, no, no. The flexibility of this is ridiculous because think about it three damage to a creature or a planeswalker. So if you're against control, you will still have a target. 
If yeah. you're against a creature-based deck like humans, something along those lines, you're going to have a target. Sure. And if this is side or post sideboard, excuse me, this is your built-in answer to again a lot of the the sideboard tech that you see in modern That's with the true. artifact or enchantment stuff. So like That's true. This is just a great all-around card. <laughs> but that was that was going to be my biggest uh I think point to that is you can hit so much stuff. Yes. Uh that you norm- normally wouldn't have a good answer for. Yeah. Um I think this card does a lot. Sorcery just freaks me out in modern. I'm gonna I, be honest. And I'm with you, I get it. But again, in specifically that deck, I don't think we see this in like uh Boros Burn or anything like that for a couple yeah. reasons. It's not instant speed and it doesn't hit a player. Um sure. and crucially you really want to be able to to hit a player if you can. But in a deck where you're already capitalizing on the damage that a sorcery is dealing with prowess creatures, it kind of works. Um Will you run a playset? Probably not. I mean, you've got better yeah. options. Lightning Bolt is just there. Um, uh-huh. Lightning Helix is there. There's a lot of better options, I think, uh, that are more flexible. But this does provide you with a main boardable answer to a lot of sideboard tech. And I think that that's kind of worth it. Um, it's it's certainly worth it. Um, my, my initial thought is that modern, maybe, I wasn't 100%. Oh, I think definitely um, modern. I think you can probably cite it. You can probably main it in a few decks in modern. But I was worried about main boarding this card in modern. But I do think uh, formats that don't get a lot of good removal options or a lot of the same removal options that we see, like Historic will probably play this mm-hmm. uh, here and there. Um, I think Pioneer probably gets this. Um, yeah. Although Historic now is getting Lightning Helix, so... I don't know. Yeah, Historic um, just got a buff. That's a whole other episode right. with the Mystical Archive. I'll be honest. Right. Um, I, I should have said this at the beginning because people were I potentially expecting them. it. Yeah. I wasn't going to even touch the Mystical Archive stuff. There are so Same many cards here. there that are already under. I mean, they banned a lot just off the face of it. They yeah. announced that they're going to be watching them very, very closely. I don't even know that it's worth talking. We all know Historic just got a giant buff. We'll see how it pans out. It's kind of my thought process. It just Um, got like a shot in the butt. Oh, 100%. It's It's ridiculous. It's it's massive right now. (laughs) Uh, If freaking Brainstorm stays in for more than a couple months, I'll be shocked. But regardless, um, you've sold me on Rip Apart. Rip Apart, uh, I wasn't like... Yeah, I, w- I wasn't 100%. The sorcery freaked me out. Yeah. Um, I immediately thought terminate in a way. Uh, okay. Two mana hit a threat. Mm-hmm. Is That's the only really, I guess, <laughs> gold card too. But, um, so formats that didn't get terminate, it didn't play terminate. I felt like wanted this, but yeah. I guess there's a lot more. Is it, do you throw it in a commander deck for funsies? Is it, is I think it good it's, enough? Uh, I think you kind of so like controversial. I think if way. you do, yeah, no, it definitely is. I think, and I think you certainly can. I think it's more of a budget option, though, because in yeah, my okay. opinion, um, and I'm I'm going to preface this by saying I am not a commander player at heart. Um, that's not my format. Uh, sure. If you want advice on commander, go to Alex. He's in our Discord. He's our moderator. Go hang with him. Um, uh, yeah, he will never not talk modern or exactly. commander. Commander, so um, do it if you have questions. Yes, uh, but I would I would suggest that in commander you want to be doing a lot more like big bad things with one card um, and the mana cost. Like, if you're going to sweep something or, like, get rid of something, you want to be sweeping all of it. Like, you want a sweeper. Oh, that's fair. Yeah, You that's don't fair. want, like, a single point-and-shoot hit. Now, that's not always yeah. true. You still want some of that. I'm not saying you don't. Say like, Path but... and Swords are... If you can, if you run white in Commander, first yeah. off, I'm sorry, you hurt you. Second off, uh, <laughs> yeah, like, Path and Swords, I think, are in your deck. Yes. I think I... they got to be. They have to be, and I do think you want yeah. some number of like point and shoot removal for sure. And I do I think Rip Bolt's, Apart gives you some of that, but I, I, I guess don't Bolt's love not it. Like a card, really, is it? No, I mean it can be. But... Yeah, I, I guess it, it could be. Maybe in decks that can copy spells and like. Yeah, that's kind of where I would think. That, but um, I, I, I mean, know. the flexibility of Rip Apart, yes, hundred percent. Are there better options out there? Maybe. Uh, again, that's yeah. where a true commander player could give you a lot more advice on that. 
Um, I will say, and, and I'm jumping jumping or shifting gears here just a little bit, but one card that I really wanted to talk about for Commander is mm. Semester's End. So yeah. um, this feels so much just like Teferi's Protection to me. Uh, sure. And Teferi's Protection is one of the best mono white cards you can run because it's built-in protection. Uh, Semester's End does something similar. It's not a perfect representation, but I do think it has a little bit more upside in some cases. So with instant three and a white, exile any number of target creatures and or planeswalkers you control. Obviously, you would do that in response to a sweeper of some kind or something along those lines. Uh, yeah. At the beginning of the next end step, return them to the battlefield under their owner's control. Each of them enters with an additional 1-1 counter or loyalty counter, depending on if it's a creature or planeswalker. I think that is amazing mono white got a huge boost with this because now instead of just having teferi's protection you've got two choices both of which i think you can run simultaneously um, sure. uh, i think this i mean again looking at and comparing it to, to the protection that card gets run in any white commander deck ever this seems like just an extra copy i will take it 100 percent. yeah i'm and I'm not like super excited to see this, but this just seems like a clever card. This is just yeah. is good. Um, if you sleeve up commander decks, you'll probably see a lot of that. I'm with you there. Yeah. Um, I do think this this also has like legs in standard, believe it or not. Do you think uh, so? I do. I think like so there are some plucky aggro decks that can make like make this work. I think mm -hmm. main board. Maybe. To me, it feels, and I and I think you said it right by saying standard, because I do think if you look at any other format, it's just too expensive, right? Like oh, Commander, correct. you've got a million correct. mana, so it's going to work there. Yeah, standard, you could potentially see it. Um, I, I don't think that it's a, because to me, it so, feels like a white heroic intervention almost, but it's more expensive, and that still scares me. I mean, fair, but if... Where I'm getting at is we have a lot of like sweepers right now in standard. Oh, yeah. You think yeah. like, ritual. Mm -hmm. um, what's the I'm not things things get minus one or minus two, minus two. What am I thinking of? In standard um, right now? Yes. Maybe it's not minus two, but it's it's like a a minus sweeper, not a like yeah. destroyer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um there's uh, most of them, I guess, are in black. Ritual. I mean, extinction event yeah, is there. there. That's um, fair. Um, the, what's which is the one that you? Pick? Oh, blood on the snow. That's yeah. One. So there's there's like a bunch of things that would just I mean take out any any white weenie strategy in that yeah. sense. Yeah. Um, I think I mean I think you want something like this to fight that because that's a controls option typically mm -hmm. against those kinds of decks or something like ritual set or something like that yeah i think um, that's fair so i feel like bounce your board make them stronger yeah that does everything you want even against it other does, aggro yeah. decks. if you think about a board at parity where you're swinging at each other and it's a race yeah you get to block semester's end pick everyone up the blocks still count no one dies and now your board's buff so i agree like, I, I so part of what's selling me on this and i i I meant to talk about this, and this kind of works in tandem, and I didn't really realize it, but Mavenda, Student's Advocate. This card, <laughs> at first, I really hated because I think they priced it out, right? They said, you know, if if uh, for zero, you can get an instant or sorcery that targets a card. Great. Mm -hmm. But then if it doesn't target a card, it's eight or more. <laughs> and it's like, that's never going to happen unless you're playing Commander. Like, I'm thinking Standard now, of course. Um, but what this allows you to do is hit feather style decks back in standard again. And I do think that they become a little bit more skewed towards white and maybe green. We'll talk about that in a little bit too, but, uh, okay. Mavenda works with semester's end, which I didn't realize because exile any number of target creatures and or planeswalkers. So you actually sure. do target with semester's end. So what you could be doing essentially is playing a bunch of these little magecraft things, these little like cheapo creatures that get boosted, like uh, this light scribe and stuff like that. Sure. Um, have a bunch of these little like one mana combat trick things that all target them, be able to replay them with Mavenda <laughs> And then, worst case scenario, you can play semesters in from your graveyard by paying mm -hmm. zero with Mavenda. And, like, yeah, there's a synergistic protect, hit there. And you protect Mavenda with semesters in that way. You do. Right? Yeah. 
I mean, I that's, that's kind of cool. Um, I'm going to be building that deck. Uh, anyway. Not, not bad. <laughs> not yeah, bad. I'm kind of into it. Um, uh, while we're thinking about aggressive white fish decks, mm-hmm. um, there's a card I want to throw at you for modern in that case. Okay. Um, so she's a creature. Uh, mm-hmm. Clever Lumamancer. I don't know if you have this one on your radar or not. I did not. Uh, so, though I did see it on a list or two. This card spanks. Um, <laughs> and it doesn't seem like it. It's an uncommon zero one. Yeah. Uh, for one, or that doesn't do much. I'll paint you a picture yeah. um, of red white decks that run clever lumamancers boros charms uh lightning bolts um monastery swift spear perhaps yeah uh, you can i think mathematically get like a turn two win with can you a, turn two or three yeah with a lot of it it kind of screwed up my i keep forgetting that simian spirit guide is banned oh yeah uh, and that fact keeps it like comes it, back yeah in my yeah yeah, yeah. Um, so it, it removes a couple of hands but yeah uh you can get a very early win um hmm. i think that there was this kind of list um was made and like run on a couple of those sites that like not yeah. magic online obviously yeah, but, yeah yeah um what's the one i'm thinking of that doesn't matter but uh <laughs> that like archetype of surprise you're dead uh <laughs> has already been built and is really successful it's faster than tron like wow. incredibly it just wow. stabs tron in the neck um dang death shadow is tricky yeah. any any deck with uh fatal push obviously is 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 tough yeah but if you think about boris charm is really the winner giving this double strike is nasty yeah um, oh, i bet but if you uh you can protect this thing with god's willing and make it dangerous like that's really it, interesting. I'll send you a list. Yeah, I'd be uh, interested to see that. Um, cause I, so I did see this on a few, again, like doing research on some particular cards. I always like to look at other people's lists just to see what kind of cards they pick and chose uh, or pick sure. and choose out of, out of the set. And I did see this one on a couple of lists, and I do think it's a good card. I think, um, you know, I, I'm interested to see the list because I can't envision a world where you really, really buff this up like you're saying on turn two or three and just go crazy with it. Um, mutagenic growth, things like that can get basically free damage off like that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. I also was thinking in terms of standard and in that Mavenda style deck, something like this would work perfectly as well. Sure. Um, but I, because I was kind of thinking modern at the time, I didn't really, it didn't even cross my mind to think of mutagenic growth and stuff like that at the time. But you're exactly yeah. right. I mean, throw Boros Charm, some some pump spells on this. You got a lethal swing very quickly. Uh, yeah, it's disgusting. Um, and, I mean, very, very mean. Yeah. Uh, let me see if I that's can find really it. Cool. Quick. I, I yeah. didn't think about it that way. I probably should have, but that's it, interesting. It gets, I mean, it gets bonkers. Um, I like all, that. Just all the small damage dealing spells you can get and then to give it like double strike yeah like if you can quote unquote ramp like red ramp your way into yeah. uh just like a couple different spells on this thing mm-hmm. boris charm bolts uh you can you can get out 10 damage a turn i like and that yeah giving this double strike it's stupid it's yeah. stupid yeah uh <laughs> Don't don't knock it yet, bud. Uh, speaking of stupid cards, I just wanted to say show of confidence. Hilarious to me that they printed Storm without printing Storm, um, oh, and sure. it's like the worst Storm card in the world. But hey, it's a it's a card. Um, anyway, moving on. <laughs> <laughs> that's, yeah, I, I feel like that's not not a brave card, and that's a jank one for sure, oh, right? For like sure, that I think that's one of those cards that people are going to build decks around, and it's going to work once, and they're going to be like, "This is amazing," and it's like, hey, "Okay." Nah. Um, anyway, yeah. card I wanted to talk about really quick: uh, solve the equation. I just want to point out that this is an uncommon tutor for an instant or sorcery card that is now in standard, um, which is kind of ridiculous. It also, of course, now hits every other format. This is a much worse mystical tutor, but it's 
pretty cool that it goes straight to your hand. Uh, I really like this. Um, I mean, we've seen stuff like this, like fabricate hit artifacts. Like there's there's other versions of this kind of thing uh, prior, but anytime you get a tutor effect like this, you do have to kind of throw it on the radar as like, okay, is there a deck that can abuse it? Um, and there very well might be, uh, but I do just think more for eternal formats, this is going to be an interesting one because again, for commander, it's another tutor for their instant or sorcery, which you can never have too many tutors in commander. Um, sure. I, I don't know about like modern or anything like that. It feels a little too expensive to me. Um, yeah. but if you can cheapen it with things like electromancer, uh, maybe there's something there again, that's, that's assuming a lot. So I'm clarifying that by saying I don't think we'll see a ton of this, but just a card to stick on the radar is is always going to be a tutor. And so I wanted to point that out while we were going through here because, uh, think, again, just interesting. I think there's a world where... Um, no, I guess you don't really slot anything out of, out of Storm. I'm trying to think of, like, what decks need an instant or sorcery to well, get there. So in Storm, the only thing I was thinking is that in Storm, so you do generally, you run the four Electromancers, which can cheapen yeah. this. And then yeah, you also Baral. run Baral, which can also right. cheapen this. Um, right. And in my thought process, I was actually looking at deck lists when I was looking at this card for Storm. Lately, they are running more than just one win condition um, in the main <laughs> deck. It's usually like two Grape Shots and uh, Empty the Warrens or something along those lines. Yeah. Which is fine, but what this I think you what this allows you to do is take out that second copy of Grape Shot maybe or something like that, throw this in there. And then depending on the situation, you've got a flexible way to pull whichever win condition works best. Um, yeah. I don't know that that's enough, but that that is something that could be considered. Um, well, not so. even just your win conditions. If you're waiting on your past in flames and just sure, just not pull it there. Out. Yeah. Yeah. It just um, it seems to me like an extra copy of your I guess that's exactly what you're saying. It's an extra copy of your yeah. win condition. It is. Uh, yeah. But like I don't know that you would because you can cast all those without your brawl, without your goblin electromancer, yes. stuff like that. But I don't know that you want to spend like most of a ritual to cast this card without one of those. I don't That's think to- so. Yeah, and I agree. I think um, I think the way you would, if you were going to run this in storm, and again, I'm speculating hard on saying that it would be, but. If it yeah. was to be run in Storm, I think the idea would be that you would play this the turn before you go off, get the missing piece, and then go crazy. But sure. I think what okay. you run into in in Modern in particular, uh, and now even in other formats, but you know, Inquisition of Kozilek, Thoughtseize, like, those are all cards that if you're up against the right deck, which a lot of decks are black decks right now because of yeah. fatal pushes, the removal is ridiculous. Like you've got all those hand destruction spells. Like those are all very strong, compelling reasons to be in black that really decentivize the storm deck uh, because yeah. they can pick apart the hand and that kind of thing. So while this sounds great in my head, um, I, it's a card on the radar for me, but I don't. I don't know where yet. Um, okay. I want to say Storm, but I I just don't think it's good enough. Um, and it's sorcery speed, which is tricky. It, c- it true, but it could be. Um, it could I be. There's, well, there's not a, not really a lot of it is sorceries too. So the the possibilities are bigger to get a game winning spell off this. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I think we might be underselling this a little bit. I think having a a chance to get your get out of jail free card at any yeah. time mm-hmm. is probably good. Okay. Um, that and that's just my. The more I think about it, like yeah, yeah, yeah. In a control deck, this is your sweeper that you can't find. This is your sure. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. This is a cryptic command in, in commander. Uh, if you need yeah. it. Um, I mean, all fair points. I think it it is the fact that it is oh, flexible is great. It hits some um, uh, cyclonic rift, right? So yeah, it does hit rift. More- that's a reason to run it in in commander um, oh it definitely hits in commander any tutor effect yeah. is like kind of at least somewhat on the table in commander just because mana is so much less of an issue there yeah. um so i i definitely hit think it hits there but speaking of a card it could get uh body of research yeah. 
I, that's what um, I thought about for standard for this. Yeah. Um, so body of research is ridiculous. Uh, three green, three blue. Pretty intensive mana cost for sure. But a sorcery. Create a zero zero green and blue fractal creature token. Put X one one counters on it, where X <laughs> is the number of cards in your library. <laughs> um. This is the. Do you have removal? Yes. That's no? exactly what it is. Um, I think I think it's very easy to oversell this card. I will just I'm I'm gonna start here by saying sure. I think uh, yeah. because okay. it sounds amazing to get a 2020 you know fractal creature out there that can just deal tons of damage. The important thing to remember is that even just in this set, there's a lot of things that just play small creatures that can block it. Um, there are a lot yeah. of things that can get more damage off quicker uh with magecraft sure. i think there there are a lot of things that this doesn't exactly work against however when it does work it's going to be freaking cool and i love it <laughs> yep this uh this feels really like a limited yeah just, oh yeah it's a, a limited bomb 100 percent right. um super hard to cast potentially turn six you know you're feeling pretty good but yeah. to have exactly the right yeah. amount that's asking a lot i think for limited i think so um, okay um <laughs> i was checking to make sure i'm gonna close the door when sarah comes home my, oh, yeah, my daughter is swimming right now so Aww. we're um we're taking swimming lessons so she's that's paddling so around that's so cute. um it is cute uh i'm not missing it grandma's there today and only two people can go so oh, okay good I, re I relinquished my spot that's nice um, of you <laughs> a nice guy sometimes you know? except when we're playing magic yeah exactly uh, <laughs> a body is like it's really cute right it is it is is there okay hear me out yeah. is there is there a jank deck that wants this card oh i'm sure can, i mean like, commander is, like is gonna love this oh yeah i mean Any have, a, deck. have um, a freaking you know 60 60 why not go ahead yeah why not i uh, think um this mixed with the the combat trick that we talked about the before yeah the that's what it's through yeah 100%. you just what charge through, through it and then you you win um i do think there's a right. jank deck where like any any jank player is gonna do this kind of combo and and try and ramp into body of research play a charge mm -hmm. through and win the game which i think is fun and i do think it will work some of the time it's one of those like oh okay mm -hmm. you got me kind of decks oh yeah i don't think it, it. it's ever going to be consistent enough to be like the best thing ever i do think the oh, the, the way that it. i could see it working is um in a control shell mm -hmm. uh which i know kind of sounds a bit really? odd but so turn six is a really interesting turn because there's a lot of um i'll say sweepers and things like that on turns four and five uh, -huh. uh so there is a world where you get to sweep following turn body of research for a good bit and then just be well positioned to to slowly start taking over the game with just a really big creature but i think the problem is there's so much again there's so much removal even in standard right now there's blood chief's thirst which kills this because it doesn't have a mana cost <laughs> right um right. like there's this dies so much yeah, exactly is, and i think that's the might, trick it might only be a limited card it um, very well could be yeah or commander but yeah oh yeah sure well sure you can play anything man yeah uh, <laughs> no because i think you're exactly there's way too much that kills this yeah uh, this doesn't make it out into any format that runs fatal push no <laughs> uh, because it, not many creatures you cast for six mana well sorry no creatures you cast for six mana died of fatal push so spending turn six yeah to die to a fatal push seems really bad yeah um, i agree i agree. So I don't think that works uh um, i know this is a really now, hot card for a lot of people though and now what's Tables actually oh okay really quick um <laughs> i forgot about that card <laughs> i will never forget about that card <laughs> I'm looking Never. really quick at the price of this card. I uh, I did, I believe I opened one. This is going to have peaks and valleys, I, I think. Of like a couple cents to five bucks, maybe. That's yeah, my... so like right now, uh, TCG mid on this is like seven bucks, six, seven bucks. I think that's too high. I think that's I think... way too high. Um, 
I think this card is like it's destined for a really cool shit that never quite worked out finder. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know that. Oh, That's so correct. Hear me out really quick. All right, what if, all right. What if you fling this token? That's pretty good. Yo, fling decks are going to love it. I'm just saying rug fling, body of research. I in. What all if right. you tibble trickery into body of research and, and just decide to fling anything? I'm done. You, you have sold me. All right, good. Then That's I retire. That's the deck it works. I've made the best deck. There's nowhere. And how we all I know. Peak every episode. We all know how many tier one decks run fling in them. So <laughs> this is clearly going to be up there. All the best ones do. Exactly. Um, no, I, it's <laughs> I'm a, done with this. Yeah, it's a silly. It's a silly card. Uh, it's a fun I one, but it. it's a silly one. I um, love it for its ambition. I'll say yes. That. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, there was one other card. Oh, there was a cycle that I wanted to talk about, which is an obvious one. Uh, the Elder Dragons are all here. Okay. Um, so cool. they all seem quite powerful to me. Uh, yes, I was I, noting that. They are like pretty bonkers good. Now, um, yeah. what I will say is the only one that I have played with so far, uh, I'm, I'm sitting here trying to find it and it starts with a B and I keep scrolling down. Um, it's the, the Witherbloom Dragon. Okay. Uh, so I played with this along hey, with. Hey, really quick, are these new Elder Dragons also? In like, terms of lore? Yeah. Don't know. Again, okay. I've I know very little lore about this set. Um, okay. So I I am not sure, but I was I was trying to remember all the Elder Dragons names, and I realized I know two. And I was like, <laughs> well, shit. I guess I you know more than two. I mean, Nicol Bolas, like Chromium, like, uh, Palladium okay, so- Mirrors. Like, there's yeah there's um oh shit he's a playing for now <laughs> ugin what? yes thank you ugin nickel yeah. bolus chromium and plate so i know four um I, that's enough that's double what you thought so that's good um <laughs> it's true look at the plus side. <laughs> Who do you think is the best here so okay that was gonna be my question to you because again ah. i've only played with one and i have i I played it a number of times in a, di- a number of different games with Witherbloom. I really like Witherbloom. Okay, so the reason being, in Standard right now, and again, I'm I'm sticking with Standard at the moment, but I do think, obviously, these have play in other formats, in particular, obviously, Commander. But this, 100%. with the extra turns card that spits out two birds, and you can foretell it and all that stuff, is ridiculous holy crap is this good so not only do you get extra creature tokens at each upkeep so you get a creature token you take the extra turn you get another creature token you get the two birds from the epiphany you can also untap all of your lands and keep playing multiple epiphanies if you want um which is stupid i mean there's some i i know that like on the face of it this takes a little bit more time to set up but the fact that you can pay 10 life and untap all of your lands makes this worth it because you can do so much in one turn and you can do that the same turn you play witherbloom because there's not a tap in that ability so you can pay the 10 life right after you play it play the epiphany take the extra turn and keep going Um, yeah i know that that's like a specific case but what all can you do by untapping all of your lands literally anything you want so like i love this card uh the sultai deck is already there uh this just i think mutates it a little bit nice little nice little uh was that a choreo yeah yeah um it it kind of it kind of changes it a little bit into more of like a ramp control with this and the epiphany in my opinion um but it works so well and then you just get to leave up all your answers like i i love it i love this card Plus, it just looks cool. It's fucking badass. <laughs> so, I mean, this was this was on my list for best card. Um, I think it's really the, solid. Yeah, I think you get the most. Ex- you obviously get the most explosive turns out of Witherbloom. Yeah. Um, second to me is probably Lorehold. The yeah, uh, Boros got a, a push, right? Like right. So the other, solid. I think the the red blue, if I'm remembering right, and then green blue are the ones that I'm like. Nee. So Quadrix, I feel like, is okay because it's a little bit cheaper. It's like five mana, I think. It's five. Yeah, Prismari's four, though. Ah, uh, that's uh, true. 
Um, it is the cheapest. It's also, I think, the smallest. Yeah, it's a probably. three four. Most oh no, three. silver silver quill is a two five, right? So yeah, yeah, yeah. But regardless. Um, I don't know. I I like all of them. I'm interested to see how they flesh out because I do think um, they've each kind of got some area that they could do well in. But we'll see. I I don't know for sure. Um, I really like Witherbloom personally, yeah. but again, that's the only one I've played with so far. So I'm I'm speaking under very limited circumstances at this point. Uh, so I think that'll flesh it out. Best, right? Like you get the most bang for your buck out of that. I think the um, simple fact that you get to do something else on the same turn that you play him mm-hmm. is insane. Uh, and sure. now you do have, worth noting: ten life is is a substantial chunk of life, right? Like there are a lot of situations where you may not be able to pay ten life to untap all your lands. However, sure. in thinking about it, on the turn that you play Wither Bloom and you untap all your lands to do whatever else you need to do, chances are you're winning that game. Not always. But if you're playing a giant flying dragon and anything else, <laughs> like I don't care if it's yeah. a, a removal spell to get rid of the opponent's creature, which then frees you up to do whatever you need to do. I don't care if it's an extra turn spell. It doesn't matter so much as to what it is. As long as it's keeping yourself alive, you're fine. Uh, and that's kind of where I think I think that he is the most, on the face of it, the most powerful. Silver Quill is pretty good. Um he but. yeah i think he's he's nice i don't like that you have to give something to your opponent yeah um like there's nothing i want to give this so here's the thing the, yeah. i never want to give my opponent the opportunity to draw a card no um, if i give him a token silver quill doesn't really work for me yeah um and then i don't want to pump their board like obviously it's better against if you're playing control player with no creatures you have a you have an out yeah 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 but like you know what I, I don't know you know what i thought of with silver quill though and i need to double check that this actually works because i do think this is just hilarious um if it if it is actually to work okay yeah so because it targets a player right um uh-huh. <laughs> i think this is so funny okay. if the opposing player plays ley line and gives themselves hexproof you can't target oh. them and oh. i don't know how that interaction works out i have oh, no idea how that works <laughs> It says must target. You must. But how can you? What happens? I don't know what happens in that circumstance. Good question. Um, I just think that's really interesting. And I I mean, again, in like modern, ley line is a fairly common card because against burn, it's nice to have a ley yeah. line. You know, you can't be targeted. It's worth it. For sure. So not that I think this is going to hit modern, but I'm just thinking like in a weird corner case, if that were to happen, that would be really funny. That is interesting um we'll have to wait and see on the dragons commander was my obvious yeah oh home. clearly outside um, of standard maybe the only home but yeah. um i'll also right. yeah i was gonna say the commands while we're here and kind of talking about this i wanted to talk about three of them in particular which is the okay. prismari the quandrix and witherbloom those are the three that i feel like are the the ones that we might actually get to see play in maybe modern or something like that prismari yeah. command three mana instant choose two deal two damage to any target draw two cards then discard two cards create a treasure token or destroy target artifact super flexible that two damage mm-hmm. to any target is probably always going to get chosen but the other three yeah. i think you can you could easily kind of choose whichever one makes the most sense in that circumstance sure. silver quill to me isn't very good it's a sorcery don't love that um and it's a little pricier so i just don't think it's necessarily going to get as much play um yeah. wither bloom is super cheap uh it is a sorcery but it does take out a creature or a non-land permanent with mana value two or less and it's, i think it's non-creature non-creature excuse me non-creature non-land permanent but again i think there's enough stuff for that to hit with mana value two or less as well so Which, I but guess it, again sideboard tech it everything right. you want to hit is going to be mana value two or less um that's i do fair. think this is more regulated to sideboard than the other ones but i do think that it's just pretty good um it also plays well in like a land deck like if you're if you're running absan knight of the reliquary for instance like milling three cards is just a good thing for you um yeah. so there's some play there it's not amazing but i think 
of the three, that's my least likely to get played, but I do think it still will. Um, lore hold command seems way too expensive for modern. Correct. Uh, it's everything, just not going to happen. The text on lore hold is everything you want to do in modern. Yeah. Like for these colors, at least. Yeah. Uh, it's just the mana cost. Yeah, it's the mana like, cost is way too high. It's too expensive. Uh, Again, commander it, players are going to yeah. love it. <laughs> uh, um. <laughs> Yeah, I think like it. I mean, um, it's flexible. It's just a good card. I think you just play yeah. it. Um, Maybe but, so. Uh, I do Maybe. think Quandrix Command is just really good. Uh, again, three mana instant. Return target creature, Planeswalker to its owner's hand. That seems really good with things like Snapcaster or something along those yes. lines. Counter target artifact or enchantment spell. Great against sideboard tech or really like pigeon holy kind of decks. Uh, Urza decks, something like that. Put two 1-1 one, one counters on target creature. Eh, fine. Target player shuffles up to three cards from their graveyard into their library. That can be helpful. Um, I think returning a creature Planeswalker just puts this up yeah. a very strong way above the other, I'll say the other yeah. three, because I still think potentially Prismari yeah. Command is the best. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. That That's all the points that I was going to hit. Oh, um, good. Well, look Quandrix, at that. Yeah. Quandrix <laughs> feels like... Let me pick one really strong one and then maybe do something else. Yeah. Um, Weather Bloom is very specific. Um, yeah. And then Prismari to me is all the good stuff. I will say Prismari maybe, maybe gives Is It Phoenix another in. Oh, um, yeah. I could see that. Maybe. It's a little pricey it's, for the deck, but it does a lot. Thing. That's the thing. Um, it's I think expensive. It's your, it's your setup card though right like you would play it the yeah. turn before you go for the arc light phoenix play probably well yeah you want to you want to get you want to pitch phoenix and so yeah. losing um faithless looting i mean decimated that deck oh if, for sure uh so giving that deck another spell to do that i think helps it obviously tremendously yeah. it's expensive oh yeah um but again uh, it's a nice setup I think it's, I'm, I'm, I don't know if it's good enough to yeah. set that deck up. I think it should be tried, but I think it should minutes, be yeah. like you're waiting till turn three realistically to do that. Yeah. I guess you play Electromancer in that deck, right? But you're still waiting. To yeah, play but that three. doesn't seem great. No, but I think th that deck still has Electromancer. I mean, it, yeah, I, I don't think that deck gets played very often anymore, so I don't know. That's, that's the thing. I'm wondering if the, I, it's a potential to put it back out there. I yes. don't know if it's good enough to do it, though. Is my I point. will agree with you there. I definitely will agree with you there. So, um, but I had them on the on my list as well. There's well, speaking of modern, we always seem to come back to modern. Yeah. Um, There's one more modern card I wanted to talk about too. You go first. I have one as well. Okay. Maybe it's the same. Silver Quill Silencer is mine. Not the same. Let's, um, let's talk about it. Cool. So the silencer to me feels like a nice, clean, just slotted into humans. Uh, it's a three, two for two. Great stats. Uh, as it enters the battlefield, choose a non-land card name. Whenever an opponent casts a spell with the chosen name, they lose three life and you draw a card. Obviously, you don't play this for the stats. You play this for the ability, but it is just a nice, easy turn to play that's above par, in my opinion. But here's my question. What are you but what are you taking out of humans to put? So that is the trick, right? Because humans yeah. is such a refined list. Um yeah. I, think, I think you've got room to play with a couple numbers, but I don't know what you take out for this. So I honestly I'm gonna look really quick, uh, because I it's been so long since I've looked at a an updated humans list. I just wanna make sure that I'm not missing anything when I say this. Uh so let me let me do a quick peek. Um Okay, so one that d so this one did come to mind, which is Kite Sail Freebooter. Um, it's also a two mana creature. It does have flying, uh, but it is a one okay. two. Okay. So you're you're trading the evasion for the stats, um, and it, basically what it does is when when it enters the battlefield, opponent reveals their hand, reveal a non creature, non land card from it, or and exile it. I think okay. this uh, could very easily. I don't know if it would fully replace or not, but I do think that it, it slots into that similar position. Um, I, yeah. And so I do kind of like this in that place. 
Uh, I think my 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 worry there mm-hmm. is what Kitesail's great at, obviously, is hand destruction. So you yes. remove the possibility yep. of that card, at least for the immediate turn. Um, you get to take their sweepers, yep. right, for the mm-hmm. turn. You get to take their path, whatever. This says you can still play it, but, yeah. right, that's the... Yeah, so that is the... Sti- but, like... I think what it does is it sets up a world where like, so, and I'm just picking a card, but say you name Fatal Push, okay? <laughs> that means for that one mana, they do trade for a creature, but you also they are also now paying three life mm-hmm. and allowing you to draw a card just to play that Fatal Push, which will, chances are, replace the card that they used Fatal Push on. Because yeah. in a human's deck, you have got a million creatures, of course. So you're always going to, um, not always, but very likely hit a creature off of the draw. So Would you in, not just meddling mage the fatal push in the beginning, though? Well, you can. And that's where I think in tandem with meddling mage, you get you set up a situation where they don't get to play a lot of their cards at all. And the ones that they do have to play are ones that worse. really, really get a lot worse, in my opinion. Um, so I just think that there's a... A That's world a where this is really good in humans. It also sure. just looks freaking cool. The art is amazing. Look, there's a couple cards from this set that like I want sleeves of. Yeah, uh, this is one of them. What? Uh, there's a a blue red card that I think is gorgeous that would make an awesome sleeve. Uh, Spectacle Mage. Yeah. Not a oh card. yeah, the little owl. Yeah, I love that card. I showed that to Caitlin I, the other day when I was, or yesterday when I was putting card. the binder together, and she was just like, yeah. "Oh, that's so cute." I was like, "I know." Um, I just, I want sleeves of it. I'll play any TCG with those sleeves. I yeah. don't care. It's just gorgeous. Um, I think you you have a case for silver blah, 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 silver quill silencer. I think yeah. there's a case for it. Yeah. Um, Kai Tail is interesting. I don't know what. Hmm. there's not much else i would take out i'll be honest that deck is so tight like you can't you really don't have a lot of flex in that slot i mean i'm trying to like decide what is better but i think it might be the silencer more often than not i also think this just trades with stuff more often um because if you look yeah, at like okay. kite sail free, I mean, not that you're looking to do that, don't get me wrong, but I'm just saying that in a situation where you have a one two flyer over a three two, in modern, I would kind of rather have the three two without flying. Um, um, in some cases, I think though that in humans, they get to buff. They do. I mean, they've so. got a lot of buff with like Thalia's Lieutenant, there's the Champion of the Parish, there's stuff like that that kind of gets around a lot of it. Um, right, so putting putting plus one plus one counters on your flyers uh, mm. is super strong, and I, I think that's probably better than because you sure. don't want to trade. No, right? you don't. You absolutely don't. Uh, I get you on that. Um, I don't know. I I really like this card though. I'm interested to see if it does hit. I think, it's, I think it's great. I think even for um, like black white control in standard, I think hate bears gets a little bit of a yeah. touch of black. Um, that's but that's good. just me. There's, I think, two more cards I think I want to talk about okay. for Modern. Um, and then I'm I'm good with Modern. Uh, <laughs> so this one is a little... It's not necessarily a stretch. It's definitely a must answer. But um, Damagoth Titan. Oh, hear yes. Me. No, I hear right. you on this. Okay, yeah. Uh, eh, Bridge Vine. Yes. Loves it. Anything that has blood gas, loves it. Grape yeah. Crawler forget about it uh you can this card busts those decks um where i feel like what they have is a lot of different small guys dealing yeah. damage um and it decks that oppose it like really hamstring it by taking out their key pieces every turn or so the things that get them back into the game stuff like yeah. that but now it, this card feels like you've got to kill this thing and that they still have gas in other yes. areas now i agree uh, I think this is just a stud. I agree, hundred percent. I um, yeah. love this card. I opened five of him into booster boxes. Um, so, yeah, right. Um, I thought of the most obscure deck possible with this card okay. when I first opened him, which All right. is standard jank at best, and I love it. And I'm gonna make okay. it happen, and it's gonna be terrible, and I know that. Okay, this and 
Outlaw's Merriment, which produces a token every turn, <laughs> which always gives you an extra creature to sacrifice and then just a bunch of controlling elements to take out the opposing stuff. Ye- it's so bad, <laughs> but I love yeah. it. <laughs> I, I love mean, it. like, yeah. It's not good. I just think it'd be funny. That's just so hard on your mana. Oh, yeah. Only- it makes no sense. Like, completely opposite ends of the spectrum right. in terms of mana cost. But you know what? We're going to try. And I'm excited. Yeah, no, hey, it's worth a shot. Um, yeah. th- having an 1110 on four is broken. Yeah. Um, I mean, my thing yeah. would be, like, I would run... I would run a heck ton of, like, black and X colored lands is my my thought. Because, again, I want a lot of removal. And mm-hmm. so, like, it would be removal, all focused in black. This, obviously, with the mainly just black color scheme, I probably wouldn't touch green very much. Yeah. And then just, like, have black red lands and black white lands and do Mardu and, and see if it works. Yeah. There's well, no way it would, but it'd be no. funny. Outlaw's Merriment is also, like, Terrible. you need seven <laughs> men to do this right. Really, I guess. Well, no, uh, I mean, you'd need four, because you just, on turn four, you'd play the Merriment, or turn... So, well, so what you're asking for is our three black-white. <laughs> right? Three black... Well, two minimum, two black-white lands, a red-black black black red. and yeah. another black land of some kind. Yeah. That, that seems like you're asking for a lot. <laughs> I, I, don't know. I don't think so. I think it's perfect. In standard, though? <laughs> no, yeah. <laughs> I'm just seeing how far I can push this. <laughs> yeah, because you, you have, they all, they, none of those can be basic. No, they can't. And it's going to be great. Anyway, it, moving it's on. It's Jane for sure. <laughs> but, yeah, it is. It's going to be um, hilarious. I, um the only the the last card that i think (laughs) you could throw around really in in maybe anything uh is double major double major uh where is that right there oh oh yes i love this spell actually clone for two at instant speed at instant speed uh yeah i i love this i think this might hit a lot more than we're initially expecting um, I, I mean, yeah. Any deck that has a big payoff creature, yeah, I think like loves this card, right? Yeah, a hundred percent. There's a lot you can do with this. I mean, even in like, even in a control shell, you can copy like a basic creature and just get something out of this. But I think in a uh, in a in a world where you're playing really interesting ETB effects and stuff like that, this right. can get out of control uh, right and for only two mana that's just not asking a lot to to play it um yeah i love this i think that's gonna yeah. be a sweet one um yeah, i think that's really solid uh that's that's all i had on my short list and a couple of the other ones i was thinking of and i didn't write down yeah uh, like that we just passed one the the red white um give everybody double strike is that the one? Oh yeah yeah, yeah. uh pass. where is it the the blade historian I think yeah. attacking creatures you control have double strike. That's just amazing for commander. Um, yep. I'm sure there's some yep. other where uh, other places that you could use that. Uh, Culling ritual was one that I was thinking of as a sideboard tech card against like mono red and modern. Sure. Um, doesn't seem great though as like a main board option by any means. Uh, there there were a couple hate bear cards that I was looking at. Um, uh, Strict Proctor was one of them, and then there was one more. If I can find it, oh, uh, Elite Spellbinder. This <clears> is <throat> hand destruction in white, which I think is kind of interesting. Granted, sure. it's not pure hand destruction; it's just a little bit more of it. Um, you may exile a non-land card from it for as long as that card remains exile. Its owner may play it, but they do have to pay two more to do it. Uh, it does also have flying. Um, it is That's three a mana. Card. Yeah, yeah. S- this feels like not a one for one trade, but closer to a one for one trade with the kite sail freebooter in the humans deck. Honestly, um, I would say no, because they still get to cast it. That's the thing they do. But I think crucially you're delaying it by a good bit. Now, I think there are a lot of decks where that's not good enough because yeah. like you hit a lightning bolt, like they're still just going to play lightning bolt. Um, 
The only They're trick just... is this with Falia does make that cost three. So okay. there are a few little corner cases where like you could make it not unplayable by any means, but they're going to have to take a full turn to play like a one mana spell, which would feel terrible. I mean, that's um, nice, but Kaito says you just don't get it. And yes, that's, and that's just better. better that's just better, case. 100%. Right. Um, and a turn earlier, no less. A turn earlier as well, yeah. Um, but the, the Strict Proctor is interesting. 1-3 for uh, 2 with flying. Whenever a permanent entering the battlefield causes a triggered ability to trigger, counter it, unless that controller pays 2. Um, again, just a nice little hate bear. It It's not going to stop everything under the sun, but it is going to slow things down a little bit for the ETB sure. decks. Um, Isn't there already like a better ETB blanker? There are a few ETB blankers. Uh, there's the lifelink one, two that just stops them completely. Um, right. And that's I do I'm think saying. that that's a better version of this, but to have extra copies might not that be a bad, bad thing. Um, so I don't know. There's a lot of interesting stuff in this set is kind of where I'm going with this though. There's a lot of things to shake up potentially multiple formats. Um, so I'm really curious to see how this shakes out. I've got no idea. I did go ahead and input my Strixhaven binder in my collection manager so I can see where the price cre- hits. You know what I mean? Nice. Like if we get a yeah. if we get a nice spike, I just want to be able to keep track of that. Um, and so I'm well, curious to see how that goes. I mean, you've got some good potential here uh, mm. to get some very lucrative cards from this set. I think a, a lot of them are cool. Yeah. Um, but that's, I think, without just belaboring... Yeah, at this point, we've been... Uh, going on for a while but there's a lot there's a ton cool set That's very cool set biggest takeaway a lot of these cards are very good yeah. um i think the ones that are obvious slot ins are really powerful uh yeah. and not not too many that you would have to roll the dice on honestly no i don't think so um which is nice yeah i this, think so this is, weird. this is a powerful set but it doesn't feel like it's power creeping really to me it doesn't it doesn't to me like there are certain cards that i feel like are just like eh, you might be you might be pushing a bit um i think the reason being for me though is because a lot of the cards are pushing outside of the normal like color pattern and so it just feels odd i don't think it feels powerful yeah it's it's just like that doesn't feel like a white card or that doesn't feel like a green card or something like that and like not that that's power creep i think that's just kind of balancing stuff out uh, which is probably for the best. It just feels odd because you don't normally see that. Like there's the card draw in, in white, which it's not a very good card, but it just doesn't feel like a white card. And I'm like, okay, uh, different. You know what I mean? Like it's just, it kind of hits you a little different. Um, I, it's fine yeah. though. I, I just, I don't feel like anything is too, nothing really breaks anything wide open. No. Right? From the set, no. in my mind, I'm not thinking of anything. The only um, card, the last card I want to say, Harness Infinity. If somebody doesn't break that card, okay. wow. I so need that one. card to be broken. Um, there's, there's always one card that is too good to work. <laughs> yeah, and exactly. That's exactly what that is. Right. Um, I guess this has two with the um, the big X fungal thing. What's the... What am I thinking? Where you, like, sacrifice... You make, you make one token that's... Yeah. X amount of cards in your library. That one. Yeah. That one's body of research. Know. Yeah. Right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That one won't work. But anyway. It won't. Uh, um, yeah. Lots of interesting set. stuff. Uh, yep. Feel free, guys, if, you, if you've if you been tuning in this long and you've got any cards that really stuck out to you, share them. We'd love to hear about it. Uh, like I said, we are going to be kind of revisiting Strixhaven, hopefully on a future podcast and see where we're at with some of these cards kind of down the road, uh, which yeah. is going to be really exciting. Um, and yeah, I'm really stoked. I really like this set. I'm very happy with it. Um, and As am I. I don't have a major complaint, which is abnormal. <laughs> Fair. Uh-huh. I think they said they fixed the foiling as well, so uh, TBD. Yeah, so I have opened a number of uh, foil cards, and so oh, far great. they do seem really nice. I don't have my binder in here, otherwise I'd, I'd pull one out. Um, but okay. overall, they they seem like they're not curling as much. I did, though, I will say, I did get a fairly interesting printing issue, and I'll, I the only reason I'm showing this card off is because I do have it just sitting right here. It's the Titan. Uh-huh. It's my fifth Titan that I'm going to be selling. Um, but essentially what happened is the centering is garbage (laughs) so this whole like top black border was coming down like almost double what it is here 
and down here where you've got like the artist text and the set number and yeah. all that it was basically running off the bottom of the it's card just miscut. yeah it's miscut um and i had there was one pack where i opened like three or four in a row which i'm sure they were from the same sheet uh so that's right. why but i was like that's really bad <laughs> um very very off you can probably get some big money for those um i know there's a couple I mean, collectors. maybe yeah there's a couple collectors who like get miscut cards oh and own miscut cards 100 percent. but where the where the from my understanding and i might be wrong but where the value comes in with that is when you've got like another card is running over you know what i'm saying where you've got a little bit of two cards on the same uh card yeah. that's usually where like okay you're getting some cool value for it but not that unfortunately okay. With those things, it's that will require networking and a little bit of asking. So yeah. I'm, I, yeah, I, I don't, don't know. know what you can get. I got no uh, idea. There was one cool misprint card that I had that I gave away, um, and it was a Rakdos fiend, oh, a little yeah. one one hybrid mana. Was it Cackler? Yeah. That's it, Cackler. Yeah, not fiend. Rakdos Cackler. Cackler. Um, it had like these weird green, like ink spots. Oh, on it. It kind of looked like they were little will o' the wisps behind the cackler. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that That's was pretty cool. cool. Yeah. yeah, I'm into that. Um, That's the only you know, misprint I've ever had. But I mean, I've had yeah. a a fair share, but they're all like minor things. It's nothing major. Um, yeah. Well, as we finish up what has been a, I think, relatively successful podcast episode for the first time in a while, it's great to be back. Uh, first time this year. Yeah, it has been the first one of 2021. That's kind of crazy. Um, well, is there anything that you want to talk about uh, as we wrap up that is not <laughs> magic related? Guys, if you don't know, we do this every time. We Let's... share a little story about something that's not magic related at the end. Uh, um, hmm. I got a puppy. I think oh, I saw that, dude. I think that's it. I think that's the only... I love that you got a puppy. I it's funny. So we went to the shelter not wanting a puppy. Yeah. Uh, we were going to meet a specific dog uh, because they were like this dog's friend of the kids. Yeah. The only question was other dogs. So we get there. We brought Molly, um, who loves other dogs and just like wants to play with other dogs. Yeah. Whatever. Um, this dog didn't like Molly for whatever reason. <laughs> I was like, yo, I don't know about this creature. <laughs> uh, puppy needs to leave now go puppy it's fine uh, <laughs> so, since that dog didn't like molly um we were and there was a, a bunch of puppies there so yeah. this puppy's mom came in pregnant and like had the babies in the shelter that whole thing uh and that's the only reason they had the puppy so we were like yeah we'll, we'll just look at them you know for fun because puppies are cute yeah and uh, then you know. got one yeah you can't not like, take one right like oh yeah, man she's and she's she's a sweetheart oh, I uh, love definitely that. afraid of anyone who's not me or sarah oh so which is kind of a bummer but yeah like loves molly molly will put her whole the puppy's whole head in her mouth <laughs> when they play though <laughs> and so oh i love that yeah when when they're done playing like her name's juniper juni whatever Adorable. Um, whatever you're feeling, uh, yeah. she'll run up to you, just head dripping with slobber from the other dog. <laughs> so it's definitely a good relationship they've got there. That's uh, really that's cute. The, yeah, the newest development. Oh, I'm sorry. Other than uh, a dope restaurant opening in Rock Hill, or has already opened, that you should go to when you're fully vaxxed, buddy boy. Yeah, halfway there. It's. Do you have your second shot scheduled? yeah get it. it's on so i i feel a little bad but uh it works out because it's a wednesday but caitlin's birthday is on may 5th so cinco de mayo um so not only is it cinco de mayo and her birthday but it's also the yeah. day i get my second shot and i feel a little bad about it um but she she was like it's okay i'll be hung over the next day and you'll be feeling terrible and i'm like all right cool yeah. that works out Thank you. What uh? What vaccine are you getting? Pfizer, Moderna. It's Pfizer. So I uh I signed up on Walgreens. Um, or I went to DHEC and then you know yeah. Walgreens popped up as near that I could get it. And so um went ahead, signed up, got the first shot. But I when I looked online, they were saying, hey, you're getting the Moderna shot. 
and i'm like cool like i don't really care i was i was happy to take whatever um but they were like yeah you're getting the moderna and then i got there and i you know handed her all the information the paperwork got it all taken care of and she was like cool here's an information packet on the shot that you'll be getting if you want to read up while you're waiting and i was like great that's awesome i'd love to so i I looked at it it was like in bold letters across the top like don't know what the pfizer shot is and like went in and i'm like wait what (laughs) i was like that's not what i thought uh but it was great the lady that administered the shot was amazing uh, cause I am not partial to shots, but she did a great job. So, uh, so Sarah and I both got the Pfizer and yeah. neither of us felt bad at all after our second shot. That's amazing. Not, it's, it, I've heard that Pfizer, you don't really get a lot of that second shot, like yuckies. Well, that's good. Um, I, so maybe you will feel fine. I hope so. After the first shot, it wasn't that bad. I mean, obviously my arm was sore, but that's fine. Um, I had a slight headache the next like day or day and a half somewhere in there and then i just was sleepy i just wanted to sleep a lot um, Fair enough. but i kind of always want to do that so that may not have been the shot right. yeah we were trying to like <laughs> sarah's pregnant so she's trying to gauge like am i tired because i'm pregnant yeah or am i tired because of the shot yeah so i feel you uh, but yeah you should take caitlin to counter when okay. you're all vaxxed up where is that it is uh right in downtown rock hill um cool. So I learned this last night, Sarah told me, it's the site of a really important like civil rights moment. Okay. Uh, so essentially what happened, uh, you know, there were whites only restaurants mm-hmm. and all that stuff. Um, and nine uh, black people went to this diner mm-hmm. uh, where they couldn't eat in. Uh, and the they like ordered food there. And the people were like, two choices, you can pay a $100 fine or you can like go to jail for however long it was. Yeah. You're like, nah, we'll go to jail. Uh, and it was like, a, it was a, it was a big moment in civil rights yeah. for our area, um, huh. which I, again, just learned about. It's really cool. I didn't know that, yeah. Uh, they've got like wooden plaques um, of all the nine people and their names mm-hmm. uh, on the wall. It's a... Beyond just it being historical and, and important, uh, the food is killer. Huh. Uh, like, we we met the owner there yeah. while we were eating, uh, yeah. and he's an awesome guy. Um, you you got to go, man. I'm happy to go. You had a date night last night, you and Sarah, right? We did. Yeah. I saw that. First date. It's the vaccine. Oh, I love that. So mm-hmm. I was gonna, I was gonna talk about we, Caitlin and I had a little bit of a date morning today. Um, okay. Because we used to go to Ebenezer Park on Lake Wiley, um, a good bit. Like just in the morning, we grab coffee, grab some donuts from like you know Dunkin' Donuts or something, the donut holes, and then go out there and just hang out and take Lou, because uh, we got to take Lou. And. Uh, so we would sit out there for half an hour to an hour and just have our breakfast, sit out, talk about the day. That was like our little morning date occasionally uh, for a while. Like we did that a good bit. Um, well, Ebenezer Park went under construction like a little over a year ago, I believe. And what they were doing was essentially on the beach area, they created this massive circular like pier that goes like there's an entrance and an exit on each end of the beach and then it essentially just goes around hit the mic around in a giant circle and it creates this enclosed water area in the middle where it's like that can be the swimming area and then people fish on the outside um okay and it had we it's it's really cool and we kept driving back and saying like you know if they're open we'll go sit out but they were never open um and parts of it are still not but the pier itself is and so uh caitlin and i went out there this morning we took lou we bought some some coffee and we uh we sat out there and had a phenomenal morning that's Um, nice so it was beautiful that was that was going to be my story because i just am so i'm stoked that we were able to do that because we've we've missed that quite a bit and yeah i tell you what getting out of the house yeah like feels great it does Uh, Oh, I worked out for the first time in over a year. Oh my god, Will. This last Thursday. Dude, I let me it. just tell you. 45 pounds got a lot heavier. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I didn't I haven't patched up to this latest version, but Yeah, yeah. Something's different. 
<laughs> well, I've never worked out. I still won't, even when the pandemic is over. Uh, but I, I have been pricing. This could be your bachelor party as we are kidnapping you and <laughs> sleeping in a gym for Forcing three days. Forcing you to go to a gym. Um, You're going to squat. <laughs> yeah, right. No, I've been uh, over the last day. Uh, so I've, I've told you before how I've like been pricing my, my magic stuff so I can get it insured and like do the whole nine. Um well, it's been really frustrating because for whatever reason, a lot of the collection managers out there are like missing something. There's always something that I find that they like don't do very well. Um, and, you know, every every app has its faults, of course. But the last one that I was using was really nice because I could do separate folders and then add to the folders the cards. Mm -hmm. So what I did is made it basically by set. And so that way, if I pulled like the fifth Dawn binder right here, I could check on my phone, see what was in the fifth on binder, and then apply new cards to it as needed and that kind of thing. Um, and get a like a real-time value for how much it was worth. Well, okay. I'm not going to say who it was, not that anybody really cares, but um, I found a lot of frustrations with it where like it would, if I was wanting to see how many of a particular card I had, but I had a couple foil versions and a couple non-foil versions, it would not combine the number to show me like how many I had in total. It was just mm -hmm. like, you've got like five of these. And then I also have three of the exact same thing. They just happen to be foil. And I kind of, because I keep a play set, I want to know just the total. Um, it also didn't just add up all of the folders into one combined folder to show me like what the full value of it was, okay. um, which was kind of frustrating. And so those were little niggles that I had with it. I ended up finding Dragon Shield, uh, which I didn't realize they had a collection manager. I knew, I mean, obviously I know a Dragon Shield. I didn't know they had a collection manager and they do. And it's phenomenal. I've been using it over the last day or two. Um, I've only got eight binders in here, um, but so far it has been phenomenal. It gives me everything that I need. It fixes the issues and I love it. Uh, so as a bit of a tip, if anybody is looking for a collection manager, it does require a subscription if you want so many cards, I will say that. Uh, but they offer quite a number of different tiers, so if you don't want to spend a lot of money on it, you don't have to. Um, but it does a really, really good job of organizing everything. Uh, and so I've been keeping track of the price of my collection through it and that kind of stuff. It's been great. So. Uh, it also shows you the like trends up and down if if something spikes or goes down or whatever you can see all that so it's helpful. That's neat. Hey, Dragon Shield makes my favorite sleeves. So uh, Eclipse so. sleeves by Ultra Pro are pretty good. Yeah, but Matt Dragon Shield man, oh, that's fair. Um, it's nice. Oh, that's fair. I, didn't, I haven't found any pink Eclipse sleeves, so do they? Not, they can... may not have pink Eclipse sleeves. I don't know. I um, they might. I found them. Pink is my sleeve color. It's my favorite. Oh, I know. So. I go white or black usually, but um, I actually bought like printed sleeves. Uh, Caitlin and I have been playing Magic, and I built Jund, and so I've got Ren and Six sleeves on that. Time out. You can actually make printed sleeves. Do you have one near you? No, I. So these are like sleeves that somebody printed. I mean, like Ultra Pro right. made them. Like, I didn't. They're not custom, is what I'm trying to say. The Ren and Six sleeves were made when Modern Horizons came out, and so I okay. just went back and bought some. Um, and then she has like Sarah Ascendant or something like that on hers, and she was doing Soul Sisters, which she loved, uh, but now she wanted to try a little bit of green white action. So we've got a uh, collected company, and nice. she's killing it. So nice, I love it. Well, hey, man, uh, I'm super stoked that she is liking Magic when she's ready to play D and D. Let me know. She will um, never be ready, I don't think. We talked about that the other night, actually. Uh, have you been watching uh, uh, Fantasy High? Oh, I finished it. It was delightful. How fucking great. It was amazing. I loved it. I've even watched a number of their other campaigns as well. Um, and it's really They're entertaining. I, I was talking to Andrew and Mary uh, the other night. And yeah. anybody can tune out, by the way, now. We're just shooting the shit. But anyway... Um, uh, we were talking about D&D &D because she plays D&D, &D, but Andrew does not. Nice. And so I told, I was talking to Andrew and I was like, dude, because he's played a couple times. He's like, here's what I do because I don't really know how it works. I just yeah. play a dumb ogre 
And then yeah. that way my decisions are just beat it up. And I'm like, all right, cool. That's the smart way to do it. I'm like, yeah, because in my head, I'm not that kind of character. I always like playing the witty rogue kind of thing or something like that. But that's way harder. And Mary just overheard and she was just like, yeah, you don't want to do that. And I'm like, well, shit, I did. So. <laughs> fantastic it is what it is um when we're ready for a group let me know yeah yeah i think sorry go ahead i I was gonna say i think i've been cursed with the forever dm now yeah because i don't have enough people that like to play uh that also like to dm in Mm -hmm. my life so i think that because i enjoy dming and i love D. &D. yeah Uh, i would love to play one day but if I need to DM to get my friends to be in it, then I'll do it. Zach will um, DM. Who will? Zach. He said he wouldn't. I asked him a while ago. Really? Yeah. No way. He, he was my my first good DM. I'll say that. Yeah. He was, he was awesome. I loved our campaign. Um, no, yeah. But he uh, he said he wouldn't. He would play. Yeah. Yeah. So, Interesting. You know, maybe, maybe we need to tie him down and waterboard him into dming i don't know i think we can convince him (laughs) on that note guys i think we are gonna end this episode i know it's been a long one it's great to be back will it's great to be podcasting with you again man yeah true enough i missed it um but do check out i don't know how regular these podcast episodes are going to be we'll be talking about that after this i am sure so we'll try and figure that out and let you guys know but i hope you enjoyed this episode of it resolves if you did leave a like or a comment down below hang out with us enjoy more content we've got plenty of it for you but uh i think that's going to be it my name is kevin my name's will and this has been it resolves